special project, one that is near and dear to my heart because I've been wanting to do it forever. It's also a project that's cost me three arms and a leg because of the way that I ordered the materials. We'll talk about that more later and if I think it's worth it or if I think you should order everything separately and do it yourself. If you are a DIY gal like myself, you probably should not order these very, very, very expensive kits. But what's done is done. Um, so I have gathered all these patterns. There's another one somewhere. Looked at them. And I'm going to combine a lot of them together so that we get a nice, cohesive idea on how we want to do these. So I'm working with this fabric, which is my jam. I love this fabric so much. I'm actually doing a lot based off of this fabric right now. So I know what fabrics I want to use, and we're going to start with the square tuffet first. And I am taking what I've learned from all the tuffet patterns and putting them together. But for the square tuffet, Quilter's Cocoon, which is out here in California, they have written this pattern. I bought this kit probably like two, two, three years ago when I first started quilting and had no idea how any of this stuff works. So a lot of what I'm going to be doing for the square one is going to come from this, plus what I learned from the other ones, blah, blah, blah. First things first, the square tuffet, she's the only person that I know. That's not true. The Amazon people have a square one too. They have a square one and a round one. But... Hers comes with this fusible interfacing. I don't love fusible. I prefer foundation, but you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. That panel right there works with four sides. The square one's going to work with four sides, at least this one. So when you lay this out, I can see here that this is section one. This is the right side of this section. The section goes right here. And then there are three pieces over here that are the left side of this section. And then I have four, one, two, three, four of these printed the exact same. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut out my pieces. And I can see where to cut so that I don't mess it up. You're going to cut one at a time. You're not going to cut them stacked up. You're going to cut one at a time. And then we're going to put all the like pieces together. The square one is really made, well, you do what you want to do, but you can piece it where you have a bunch of different strips, or you can do a focus fabric like this. And I'm actually going to do the focus fabric, even though my face is going to repeat a few weird times. I'm going to let that happen because it's all right. It's okay. We're going to let it happen. So like I was saying, you can piece it like this where you have a bunch of different colors, which is going to take you forever. Or you can do focus fabrics. You do whatever you want to do once you figure out kind of how it goes together. Okay, so I'm going to cut out these pieces and then I'll be back with you. I guess I could show you how I'm going to cut them out. Which is like this. I can see the print here and I think I'm going to cut them out with my, I guess I could do my rotary cutter. Rotary cutter. It says use your scissors. And um, I'm not. <laughs> I think I cut a little faster. Actually, the ladies at the quilt store, Candies, can tell you that I'm actually a horrible <laughs> scissor cutter. This woman was trying to cut a really long piece of batting and I happened to be standing on the other side and they were like, hey, can you finish cutting it? Sure. I don't know what I did, but that was some of the raggediest cutting and everybody was looking at me like I had just ruined the... <laughs> they were like, what is happening? They just assumed that I would be a wonderful scissor cutter. Turns out, guess it's not my gift. I was trying to cut something the other day and I realized I really don't cut very well with scissors. But I seem to have made it through kindergarten and a few advanced degrees, so I guess I'm all right. I guess. All right, so I'm just going to go around and cut all these pieces. And I should have four of, you know, these pieces here. This is section C, 2CR, but we'll talk about all that once I get all these cut out, which is probably going to take me a little bit because there's a lot of pieces. I guess that's, yeah, well, cutting them out now. 
So this is what this looks like on my ironing board where I have it all laid out. This is one panel cut apart. This is like the right side reversed. And then this is just the right side. There are three pieces over there. And then there's this piece right here. So I've got to do this four times. I kid you not. I've been standing here for maybe... I don't know, 15, 20 minutes just staring at it. I've been moving this up and down trying to figure out where I want to use this. I have decided that it is what it is. I'm going to have to cut into this and I'm going to mess up those heads up there, which means that I will, if I use them, I will have to partially use them, blah, blah, blah. I was trying to salvage as much fabric as I could, but the main event are these tuffets, so we're going to just cut for the tuffet. So here's my theory behind why I'm placing it where I'm placing it. I'm using these hearts as center, even though I really don't think they are dead center, but it gives me enough on either side that I really don't feel because this is not perfectly symmetrical. So no worries. I'm using this center line as the heart. I can see her head, her hair, her crown. I get to keep all of this. I'm going to lose what's in the seam allowance on either side of here. I'm going to lose a lot of this flourish to the right. I'm going to lose just a touch of the flourish to the left. This is what they call the shoulder. So this is where it's going to bend. And it bends right at the heart. And then I'll get six inches down from the foam. So if this is the edge of the foam, I should get about six inches down. And that gives me right to below her lips, but it gives me the, the Q heart here, which I really like. Um, this Q over here, all that'll be cut off, so I won't see, get a repeat of that. And I feel good about that. But I've got two cameos up here. I've got a partial cameo and a whole cameo here that I think I get to keep that one, but just a little bit. And then down here, the head is getting cut off, so I won't get to keep this cameo. It is what it is. You get what you get. You don't throw a fit. This one here will not be able to be used, but the one after it will. You know, such is life. So I'm going to go on ahead and cut this out with probably some scissors and put this to the side. And then I will line it up properly, fuse it down, then cut directly on the line. And then I will have hopefully identical ones if I just make sure that everything is lined up where this goes on the shoulder, I should be fine. So for the first big piece, section 1A, um, I'll show you guys that. But I just want to show you, I cut like a half a yard of fabric. Then I cut that in half. And now I'm just laying these pieces down. These pieces are very fragile. I ripped one already. So I'm going to lay them down. I'm lining them up right here with this line and then I'm going to press them down using medium dry heat and I just hold my iron here for about five seconds and it fuses down beautifully. So this is what all the pieces look like once they're cut out. This is our focus fabric obviously. Um, then we move on to our black and our white stripe. Then these two. I love the way these two look together. I'm contemplating adding a piping in here <laughs> because it wouldn't be me if I wasn't doing too much or pushing in some kind of weird way or unnecessarily adding stuff. I love the way that this looks, but I'm thinking that these two sitting together, it's, it's, a uh, um, <laughs> something, you know, it's, it's two patterns. They work, but I'm contemplating. But anyway, so let me just flip this one over. So this is what we're seeing. When you are lining this up, make sure that you realize that you're going to get the reverse. So I had to kind of think about that because I was centering all my fabric with this line, which seems to be a little off center. So when I flipped over the fabric after I'd already cut it, I was a little bit short. I was able to make it work. But just be mindful that when you flip this over, you're getting the reverse. So you can see through it pretty well, but just be mindful of that when you're tracing your fabric if you're doing something like this. And again, these have all been cut out on the line. This is section 2A and the section numbers are right there. And 
it's telling you that it's using a three quarter inch seam allowance. So that's something else to also be very mindful of. We are not using a quarter inch seam allowance. I just don't think that would be strong enough. So yes, that's all the pieces. I'm going to go on ahead and just think about some piping really quickly. And if I choose to see, do that, you'll see that next. You'll see me using the piping. I've got an idea for two, two options of piping. And I keep saying it, so it's probably going to make its way in here. We'll see. So, I've got my yardage here. And I'm going to cut it at a half a yard. Because I have decided that we're going to do the piping. And what makes this funny to me is that as I was auditioning colors for the piping, I actually auditioned another print. And I'm like, if you don't knock it off, you're already talking about it's busy. Like the two of those meeting together feels a little busy. And then you're going to introduce something else busy. Because what? I am the queen of doing too much. Too much, too much, too much. Which sometimes works out for me, and then sometimes it just doesn't. <clears throat> so I just cut a half a yard, and now I'm getting ready to open it up. And I'm busting out my TQM bias ruler. And I am going to put that puppy like this. And what I like about this is as long as you have these two lined up, you are on the bias. And what's cool is I can just keep cutting and the strip length that I'm going to need is, I believe, one of these, the length of one of these. So, yeah, I'm feeling very happy about that. Yeah, one strip of bias will give me one of these strips will give me as much as I need for my cording. So, yeah, I'm feeling good. Feeling good about this. Don't you just love when you have tools for the job? This is by Susan Brown from TQM. She's also the lady who has the super amazing um, joiner. The, the lady who does the join for the end of your quilts is what I'm trying to say. I just showed you guys that product in a haul. Okay. So I'm going to put this like this. And I'm going to put this like this. And we are going to take a cut. Bias. I should have started way off in that corner. I don't know why I started right here, but you get what you get. And you do not throw a fit. Because now I'm going to have to rotate this guy. This is a two and a half inch ruler here. So I'm just going to line this up on the two inch mark, which is marked for me. And I like this because it does bend and you can throw it in your bag. In case you need to throw it in your bag. Bam. There we go. And now we're just going to cut strips. I'm making this look a lot more complicated than it really is. If you go to Joann's to get your cording, do not, I repeat, do not get your cording from the trim section <clears throat> you'll pay double the amount this here is from the upholstery section it's by Dritz it's made for this and it's way more affordable way more affordable so I'm just gonna run these down the center and fold it over and sew it This is not quarter inch. This is five thirty seconds, I believe, which is a little bit smaller. I didn't want this piping to be all in your face. So, yeah. 
I'm just gonna fold it over like that and then just sew down the side the same way I did before. And that will be that for this. So, yep, I did it. I made a ton of piping. And I'm not exactly sure how to attach it because there are no instructions. So we're just gonna wing it. Before I do that, all of the two pieces, so all of these pieces need to be cut right here on this on this line, on the inside line. We're just gonna cut right up to the the shoulder. See that we just cut right there. And that needs to happen on every single one of all these pieces, but just on the inside. And that's gonna give it some wiggle room to breathe and move around. So for the piping that we're doing, I am just basting the piping down. Nothing special, just a super long stitch. And we are just doing it. And I'm just making sure to keep this piping lined up with this outside here. And I'm only basting it to the piece that's on the left hand side, which is this um, hexagon. And again, nothing as special is happening here. It's just, we're just trying to get it stuck on there so that we can figure it out. I'm gonna go on ahead and turn this this way. There's a snip in there and then I'm gonna just keep basting. And then I'm gonna come back and snap and snip that so they can breathe in that same corner. The only thing I'm doing is just trying to keep the fabric lined up. So far we've got the A piece to the B piece with the little piping detail in the center. It came out pretty good. Um, I'm not quite sure how forgiving this pattern is going to be because I did not hit the line exactly every time. So we will see what we're working with here. Um, I did pretty good. I got close, but that piping is in the way. So you're definitely going to want to use a zipper foot so that it does not... Um, you know jump all over the place now I'm gonna sew this guy to the back end of this guy and be sure to cut right here cut to the line do not cut through matter of fact you might even want to cut a little short of the line just to be sure I kind of had a gap in one of them because I cut all the way to it I think I'm gonna just stop cutting about right there I'm hoping that that's showing up in the, but just a little bit, I'm going to stop right there. All right, so now I'm just going to right sides together these bad boys just like this and pin. And this should be quite a bit easier to do. I guess I should cut away. They asked that you cut away a quarter of a uh, quarter inch of this here. So I guess I should. Because there is a lot happening with, with all of this. And they want you to taper in a bit. So I'm going to just cut away a quarter inch. Pretty much I'm going to cut away that basting line. And that should be nice and secure. I'm going to do that with my scissors. So I just took my scissors and cut away probably a little bit less or little bit yeah whatever and then I just tapered in a little bit here I will show you on another one I'm just gonna fold this back I'm gonna cut off this bottom piping I'm still leaving a little bit there I didn't cut it right at the and you're trying to leave about a quarter of an inch left 
cut all that off. Be sure not to cut that. And we are cutting here. And we're just going to taper with this. Just follow that line. And there we have reduced some bulk. Actually, I can feel it. It actually feels lighter once you take that off there. That feels good. And then we'll take this piece here, which goes like this. And we've clipped it. And so we'll just fold it right sides together. And this should go a whole lot easier because there's no piping in the way. This one here, I can probably get... I can feel the piping up here, but I can probably get this a whole lot more accurate than I got the other sides. And we'll just do this. And I will be sure to pin and we'll be good. And just sew right through all of that. So for this, I just want to show you guys, I kind of came up with a trick of sorts. Sort of, just it's making it a little bit easier and a little bit cleaner. So this is what we're looking for. We want to put that piece next to that piece right no problem i am going to put these right sides together and we've got a very strong shoulder curve area but this part should be going straight down to match this area right here <clears throat> so i'm actually going to just start from the bottom and line them up and throw some clips down here And I'm going to line this part up right with that point right there. And I'm going to pull this over to the sewing machine. And this is all lined up. And I'm going to drop that needle right in that center area where it is supposed to be right there. Then I'm going to straighten this up, drop my presser foot, and then sew this line. This is where I'm literally starting. And I can kind of see the line. I still have my zipper foot on, but I can see where I'm sewing. And I'm gonna sew all the way down to the bottom. At the bottom, I'm gonna go on ahead and do a back stitch here. Okay. And also, you want to be sure that you backstitch when you start. I totally forgot, but the way that we're going to get around that is we're just going to go right over it one more time. Because you do want to have this reinforced right here at this shoulder. So I am going to drop the presser foot, and we're just going to go over it again. And we can actually backstitch here. And come on forward. All right. Now, where it gets tricky is this area right here, trying to make this all work. It was just getting too crazy. Look at how that, because you have quite a bit of play down here. So what I did was I flipped it around and I pinned this right here where it's supposed to start. You can pin it or use a clip. Just make sure it's all lined up properly. Now I have smoothed all this out so that there's no gathers or gaps or anything in here. And I'm going to place my needle down right here again where it starts. There we go. And I'm going to again just make sure everything is smooth under that needle. Because that's what we care about is that under the needle is smooth. There's quite a bit bunched up behind it, but we'll be all right. And I'm going to make sure that this, you give it a little, just make sure you pull it taut and it straightens right out. And now we're going to take a couple of stitches, try to hit that line, and we're going to do some back stitching. And 
And now we're going to just sew on down the same way we did the other side. We're going to try to stay on the line and keep it taut so that it, there's no buckling. So this way, when you get to this little corner, you don't have any tucks. It's smooth. I mean, there's some wrinkles in here because of how I was holding the fabric, but it's, it's smooth. And it's tight, and you can put a little tension on that, and you won't have any issues. I know it's a weird little elbow turn, but I found that that method, just starting from the middle, from that little section, works so much better than me trying to come around that curve and figure out where all this excess fabric is supposed to go. Because again, it's a weird shape, and I will press this out and it will lay flat. So here we are <clears throat> with these pieces now, and I'm going to do the same thing that I did before so that I can get it, you know, flat here in these corners. I'm going to sew up to here to here or down here to here, and then I will do the corner pieces. I'm debating whether or not I'm going to use black thread or pink thread. I think it's going to be black. Uh, I did switch out the thread color for here. I used blue thread just because it felt like the right thing to do, especially with all this madness here. All right, let's go on ahead and get these quarters uh, sewn together. I can't believe this is coming together, finally. <laughs> I'm scared, though. I'm like, oh, what if it doesn't look cute? But it looks... It looks cute just the way it is, so let's go. So now I have all of these attached. And up here it has gotten tight and funky because of this piping. And so I'm hoping that whatever button I choose to put on the top will cover up all the unsightliness that's going on because, excuse me, it's not 100% even. So I'm like, oh my goodness. I think I'll be okay. Um, the button that they use is a pretty big button and I'm hoping for the best, but it is not perfect right here at all. Not even a little bit. But I, again, I am hopeful that this is going to come together just fine. So I'm going to start, I have no idea how to put this together actually now that I think about it. I'm assuming it's got to go right sides together. And then, oh, look, it's, it, it has a whole curve situation here. Look, it just curves on down. Okay, I feel good about it. This part should be fine. I'm not too concerned about this one not lining up properly. I think we can get that to be a-okay. I'm assuming that's how it goes together. How else could it? I don't think I need to cut this one here, but we'll see. I'm going to read the directions. And... Um, Again, I think we'll, I think we'll be fine. So the top is all sewn together. It's trimmed. Um, now I'm just going to look at the bottom. I left a lot of these piping things overhanging. So I'm just going to trim them even. And now I'm going to go and get and press this entire <clears throat> excuse me this entire thing here I'm gonna press it one inch up so I've got out my little ruler here and this is my clover pressing ruler and I'm just gonna fold this up to about an inch and then I'm just gonna give it a little press And I'm going to do that all the way around. I might even throw a little, just a little bit of basting spray, a little basting glue, just to keep it in place. Here's a little school glue. And I think I'm just going to just do a couple of drops. And then after I do this, so I've just pressed this over and then I just sewed it down. Nothing 
overly complicated about it. I just did it. All right. Now I think it's time to prep this bad boy for real. Um, and go get the bottom part. It is time to start assembling, I think. So with this kit came the batting. This batting feels just like the new foam batting that I just used for those cushions. It's thick. It's uh, polyester. It's a high loft. It feels like it is an upholstery grade. I pulled out my Stanley staple gun. It's an electric stapler and nail gun. And it says to use 3 8 inch staples. So here are some 3 8 inch staples that I'm going to put in here and we are going to get to it so my staple gun is prepped and now I'm just going to kind of center this in the center of my table and now with the foam side down this came with the wood already prepped for me so it's got the holes in there. It's got the, um, the t what are those called? Like T-nuts. So the legs can go in without a problem. And I'm just going to make sure that this covers. And it does. And it does. Make sure that it comes up all the way on all the sides looking good yes we are extremely close here but you get the gist there's foam under here this wood has been glued to the back of the foam I just set it on some batting and now it's time to gather and smooth this batting all around on this square I am starting with the corners and we're just gonna go for it be great if I turned on the gun right okay you know what before I do that I'm gonna turn this gun off before I do that I'm gonna draw some lines so that I know where these feet are really quickly okay so we want to be sure to staple behind these legs so we can still see where they are I would have made that boo-boo okay so I'm pulling this tight on this side we're gonna turn this on again and we are going to staple Ooh, I heard it <coughs> hmm on high I believe it is they are not flush in the way that I want them Let's see what's going on here I'm gonna do the other corners and I'll be back with you so I swooped it up like you put it in a ponytail on these corners and then I stapled 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 and believe it or not, stapling is a little harder than one might think. <laughs> it took a little, took a little power. I had to lean on it. So now I'm going to flip it over. Huh, it's nice and it looks like a big pillow. It looks like the corners are rounded. It doesn't look like super funky anywhere. And so now I've got to find the center of this foam. And I think it's right there. Yeah. It's right there and I got to stick something through it. So hold on. I am looking for my all and here it is. Where is it? I saw that. And there it is right there. So that's the center. And there's a, you probably can't see it on camera, but there was a really dark mark in the foam there that I could see. 
Now I'm going to carefully wiggle the tuffet cover on here and I'm going to have to give it some zhuzhing. You know, I'm going to have to be pulling on it and all that kind of stuff. So give me a moment to get it on here and see if it's even going to fit and look cute. So I am sweating a little bit and I had to bust out the hammer to knock some of these staples down. If you have a pneumatic, that's really what you want to use because this guy is kicking back some and it's not getting all the way through. Um, and it could be operator error, but I think a pneumatic gun hooked up to a compressor is really the way to go. Even though this isn't a manual, it's still an electric. It's still just not quite as strong as I want it to be. But it, uh, it'll get the job done. It'll get the job done a little bit. There we go. So the, the corners have been bunched because that is just the fit. <laughs> that was just the fit that I come up with. Um, I tried to get these as straight as I could. But the top and the sides look very good. Yes, I realize I got to put the button there, but it's smooth, which is what I wanted. It was a nice, tight, smooth girl, and she looks, she looks good. I'm pleased. I'm going to back out and let you guys see a much better picture of this because of how close you guys are we can only get so far away but it looks really good so now I just need to I think I'm going to finish the bottom and what I mean is put make it look really pretty at the bottom too just clean it up on the bottom and um, do the button and then put these beautiful heavy duty legs in and that'll be all she wrote this will be my little squaff it Okay, so for my first one, it is not perfect, but it's pretty darn cool. I like it. Um, I'm going to show you the back. So this is the back right now. I think I'm going to paint these feet. I think I am. I'm not exactly sure. And I think I'm going to go on ahead and cover the bottom and just give it a little bit more of a finished look. It's big, too. Like, this is really a large... It's large it's a, it's, and it's heavy. <laughs> it is large and it's heavy and it is, it's pretty cool. Again, not perfect, but awesome, you know? For the button, I just covered it with batting and then I covered it with fabric and just pulled it tight in the back. I only used a needle to push, to break through the foam. I backed the needle in. I didn't even use the, the sharp part of the needle. I backed... A 12 inch needle in and then I put the cords through here and then I just pulled it straight through it took a little time but it was doable here's what it looks like from this side with the legs again I think I want to paint them that neon orange but I'm just not a hundred percent sure I kind of want to paint that orange right there but I don't know but here it is it's big and it's heavy and I feel good about it it's it's pretty well constructed um, I would definitely do this again this could be a really fun project to do one more time so I just took a square that is 15 inches and a piece of fabric that's 16 inches and just folded it over nothing special and now I'm going to staple it to the bottom of this uh, tuffet just to give it a finished look you know so for the backing I just again I cut a piece of batting stuck it over there stapled it down but I made sure to stick in these little pins where the holes are and then I just stick my scissors down in that where the pin was those are those nice sharp Kai scissors <laughs> 